Welcome back friends. So I picked up this induction heater, which is supposed to be able to heat up stuck bolts and get them loose easier. But I think it could be used for so many other things as well. Now this one was the least expensive prepackaged handheld one on Amazon. There were some other DIY kit ones at Amazon that were cheaper, but this one was ready to go and supposed to be operated via hand. So it's kind of interesting. The box itself doesn't really tell me much of anything. So uh, let's go ahead and get inside here. Take a look. Here's the actual coils for the induction heater. They give you three different sizes. That's nice. These are the little Frankenstein bolts that attach the coils to the doohickey. Got a warranty of some sort, a user manual. And here's the bad boy herself. Operates on 110. Airflow for venting, so obviously it has some fans in here to cool down the electronics. Now, I don't know exactly how this one operates, but most of them have like two MOSFETs in them and they use like the induction coils themselves and a, and a capacitor or a bank of capacitors to create a resonant circuit with those two MOSFETs and they blink back and forth like that to create the uh, oscillations. And of course they get nice and hot, so that's probably a good reason why it has fans inside. So we have lots of pretty fun things on here. This is the hot rod flameless heat system for professional use only. So all you non-professionals don't use it. Yeah, right. Do not look directly into LED lamp. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's still not a lot of good stuff on this thing. Supposedly this thing is 1000 watts, but it doesn't even say that on here anywhere. Oh, yes it does. It's 10 amps at 110 volts. So that would actually be 1100 watts. Good to know. So just in case some of you guys don't know how an induction heater works, this thing will put out a high frequency electric current, which when you run it through these coils, anything inside these coils that conducts electricity will start to heat up because as the frequency oscillates around this coil, it'll induce eddy currents inside whatever workpiece you're trying to heat up. And that causes heat in the workpiece via two different processes. One, it creates heat just from the resistance of whatever you're heating in the first place, which is why low resistance materials like aluminum and copper, you can't really heat with induction heating. And the second way it creates heat in the object is through hysteresis, which only works in a magnetic material like steel because it makes the atoms try to go back and forth fl flipping their magnetic poles. And the atoms don't like to do that, so it actually causes internal friction in the thing itself. Now this is an important little tidbit of information in the manual here, is the duty cycle. You can use the device for two minutes, and then you gotta let it rest for five. Always keep duty cycle in mind whenever you're using any type of electrical equipment, just to extend the life of your tools. All right, so getting this thing set up is pretty simple. We just have to take these little screws out here, and insert the coil into the end of it, like so. Screw in the little Frankenstein bolts. There we go, that's good to go. Now let me get it plugged in. Oh wow, I guess the uh, fan on this thing runs as soon as you plug it in. But it's not supposed to be heating up the coil until you actually push this button right here which you can see the LED lights when you do that too. So let's try this thing out on a bolt first. Whoa, I see smoke coming off. Look at that. Whoa, can you see that? It's actually turning red. It's up over 200 degrees. I'm gonna turn the lights off, see if maybe you can see that better. There it goes. Things glowing red. Ha. Ah. Yeah, it has this thing pretty hot. That's nice. Wow, I'm impressed. This bolt is still a little too hot to touch. 
Now I do want to point out that the effectiveness of the coil does depend on the size of the object that you're putting inside there. You know, if a smaller bolt you're trying to heat up, you definitely want to use the smaller coil and the larger one you obviously have to use larger. But the closer you can get the size of the coil to what you're trying to heat, the better it's going to heat up. And you know, the coil itself isn't isn't really warm. It's just barely warm to the touch. But this little thing is it's still hot. This is nice. So hey, let's go see how this thing actually works in practice. So the Bertone has had an exhaust leak for a minute and uh, yeah, I found this. Now I'm not really entirely sure how these could have gotten loose, but obviously they are. But the problem is that the nuts are frozen onto the studs with all that rust. So let's see if the induction heater can help. Now originally I tried to film this from underneath, but there wasn't really any way I could get a good camera angle and also be able to actually do what I needed to do. There's also just not a whole lot of space under there and maneuvering the induction heater around is kind of difficult as it is pretty large for a handheld device. But it indeed did heat up those nuts. But of course that first one I was careless and snapped the stud. That's just going to have to be a future me problem. Let's press on with the other nuts and studs and see how they fare. I held the induction heater on the other nuts for a little bit longer and got them really glowing good. And it worked! Well, it did actually work, despite me snapping this one stud off. I mean, freaking 35 year old Italian steel, am I right? But I was able to get both of these other uh, nuts glowing red hot. Uh, in a short amount of time and tightened them up. So uh, I'm gonna have to drill this thing out, which really sucks, but uh, the induction heater worked. I guess that's the point. I will say that maneuvering this thing up in here was a little bit of a struggle. It's a little bulky and there's not a whole lot of room to work down here, but I was still able to get it on the, uh, the nuts and get them glowing. So yeah, I think I'm pretty impressed with the uh, the hot rod here. I'll have a link down in the description below if you want to pick up one of these for yourself. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it actually. Well, bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you aren't and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us out.